Okay. Gather my thoughts. <laughs> Try to stare at the green light, right? Okay, so I'm not wearing the sunglasses because of my eyes. Okay, anyway, fine. This is what I look like. Uh, and by the way, when I shave my head, people say I look like Obama, which is only because most white people think that all black people look alike. Um, the racist issue isn't going away. It's not. But the whole way they present it to you, now that, now, see, as days go by, this thing just flies in their face, backfires. Turns out, he didn't storm off, right? That doesn't even sound like Ron Paul storming out of an interview. That's, I mean, he didn't storm off. Watch the whole thing. Did he stay toward the end, till, all the way to the end of the interview? Yes. Was, like, the killer question at the end, oh, what about these racist letters? All right? But did he run away? No. It was the, it was the end of the interview. He, he made his statement. I disavowed them. Right? I didn't write them. And that was that. And then the way they painted all over the place, I hear it over and over again. He ran off. He did, right? He stormed off. He didn't want to talk about his... Right? That's not Ron Paul, and you know it. The only guy on stage, the only candidate on stage that'll take it from all sides and stand his ground. Doesn't matter. And he gives straight answers, which makes them crazy. Because they, they, they can't believe their ears. He just gave us a straight answer. Didn't mealy mouth around it, didn't sway, didn't flip flop, didn't, right, didn't, right? It's the same story for 30 years. Right? Show me the interviews where he espouses racist views. Show me the votes in Congress where he, where he espouses racist views. Right? The Constitution, liberty is his guide. Right? And then, like I said, how far have we fallen if the Constitution makes you crazy? If you're the one that, the only one that votes consistently with the Constitution as your guidepost, and you're the crazy one. Okay, so the racism issue, it's a non-issue, it's a smokescreen, it's BS, it's a smear campaign, and you know it. And you know it. So, what are they falling back? Oh, the, his foreign policy is crazy. Okay, good. See, now let's move, let's talk about issues, right? It's not, it's not the, the, the main issue is the central bank, but let's talk about issues. The, the foreign policy. What's his foreign policy? Let's see, we've got a foreign policy now where we just basically run around the world bombing people, doing what we want. Right? Big stick theory. It's been going on for about 100 years. And he's wanting to put an end to that. Bring the military home. Right? Not disband the military. Bring these guys home and have them spend their money in the United States. Well, gee, would that boost the economy in a lot of different places where instead of having these guys spending their money in Japan and Germany and the other 100 and some odd nations, 130 something nations that we've got troops stationed there, spending their money there, their paychecks go there, why not have them spend their money in the United States? Gee, instant boost the economy. Meantime, uh, I get tired of listening to these guys who are supposedly have degrees in journalism, right? These guys are in the media. They should have studied. Like, we're just laymen. We just use the language. But they should have studied the language and know what the words mean. Interventionalist, isolationist, two different things, right? A non-interventionalist party par policy. Well, we don't have a non-interventionalist party. <laughs> We've got one party. We call them Democrats and Republicans, and it's the same party, and you know it. Now... The <laughs> isolationist claim is is Canada isolationist? Is Germany isolationist? Do they have military running around the, in you know massive interventions all over the country or all over the world? Right, all over these different countries. No, they don't, and yet they trade, and that's what Ron Paul would like to do. How about we trade free markets instead of using our military in the big stick? Hmm, that's that's crazy talk. That's that's his foreign policy views are 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 insane. No, the po foreign policy that says we get, we kill one bad guy and kill 23 guys as collateral damage and we look the other way, right, collateral damage. What is that? Collateral damage is grandma. Collateral damage is babies and women and farmers and reporters and whoever happens to be standing in the way, right? That's collateral damage. That's some, sh that's some crappy shooting text. And you know it. And it's time to put an end to it. Now, and that's their military's own numbers. It's not us making stuff up. I mean, you can look it up. And then the other thing nobody wants to talk about, suicides in the military take more men than the combat does. Right? Suicides. Check into that. Right? Military suicides. You know, why would that be? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that, but come on. It's, it's time to stop the madness. Because what's mad, the foreign policy that we currently have, is the madness. Right? And you guys on TV should know the difference between isolationist and interventionalist or non-interventionalist. Right? Non-intervention. Right? Entangling alliances with none. Bring the troops home. 
Is anybody invading the United States? Nobody's invading the United States because even I've got tons of pictures and I put them on Facebook and all over the place. Women with babies and guns. Right? The Japanese said they would never try to invade the United States because there'd be a gun behind every blade of grass. Right? We got guns. 80 million of us, 90 million of us. I don't remember the last statistic. And when Obama got elected, there were even more guns went out to the public. Right? Nobody's coming to invade us. Just like nobody's coming to invade Canada. Nigeria is an oil rich nation. Nobody's running into there to try to invade Nigeria. Right? The only country that goes in and invades other con in country. Mm, who would that be? I remember when, you know, we used the Christian doctrine. Right? We're, we're, we weren't the invader. And now we start wars of aggression, and you can't call it anything else with a straight face. That's not isolation of saying that we need to stop this, and that we should be trading instead. And, and I noticed that if Ron Paul's there, then they don't call him an isolationist to his face, because they know they'd be refuted instantly. If there's a Ron Paul supporter in the room, or you know somebody from the campaign, they don't use those terms. But if it's two talking heads going back and forth about Ron Paul and his foreign policy, then they bring up the term isolationist. And it's not true. It's a falsehood. All right, drug war. We covered that pretty well already, but the drug war is is not another insane thing. But that's only billions of dollars, only, right? But prohibition didn't work then; doesn't work now. It's not working now. Now the only candidate that wants to let people out of jail that are nonviolent offenders is Ron Paul. Doesn't matter what color they are. You are a nonviolent offender with marijuana. Pardon. Right? I mean, they're it, simple. Uh, now we move on to the slightly bigger issue of the foreign policy of war, right? That's trillions of dollars. In fact, Donald Rumsfeld, I think he said, oh, we, we just happened to misplace two trillion dollars, right, before the 9-11 attacks. And, of course, that all got lost because now only the news was the 9-11 attacks. Two trillion dollars lost. Okay, so that's trillions. That's a lot of money. Bailout to the bankers, that's also trillions. But then we get back to the Federal Reserve, and that's the main thing. The main, th all the rest of this, foreign policy, all, right? It's all a smokescreen because all the money comes down to this private corporation that prints our money for us and loans it to us at interest. Now, you don't believe in sound money? You don't believe in gold and silver should be money? Fine. Even though, what, silver in 50 languages, the word for money and the word for silver is the same? Fine. How about our treasury does its job and issues debt-free currency. <laughs> he said it. Two presidents have tried this. Uh, one of them was J uh, John F. Kennedy and the other one was Abraham Lincoln. And we know the result. Right? And, then who, and, and who, who killed those guys? Right? If you believe in single bullet theories and lone gunmen, then okay, then alright. But it's the f bankers. The same guys that shot Andrew Jackson. The same guy. I mean, we've been at war with the bankers for centuries in this country. Right, the, the, For the 200 years that we've been around, plus years that we've been around, we have been at war with the bankers. And they've tried to put you to sleep. And now the one guy that brings it up, the one guy that talks about the Federal Reserve, no more federal than Federal Express, the private corporation that prints our Federal Reserve notes, and we have to use that as currency right, because of legal tender laws, the one guy, he's the racist or he's the crazy guy, he's the crackpot, no, what's, insan what's, what's insanity is that our nation is going down the tubes because we have an unsustainable financial system, right, that sustains these wars and drug wars and, and foreign wars. That's the insanity. And the one guy that wants to put a stop to this and stop the greed and graft, his name's Ron Paul. We got one choice. There's, no, there's nobody else that's talking about this. There's nobody else that has a track record like Ron Paul's when it comes to voting with the Constitution. There's nobody else talking about the Federal Reserve. Right? Well, there is now, but that's because of Ron Paul. Simple as that. All right. Stick to the issues. You want to you wanna argue politics? Let's do it. But that whole racism thing, that's just a smear campaign, and you know it. Right? You want to talk foreign policy? Great. Let's talk foreign policy. You want to talk about the Federal Reserve and money, currency? Fine. What's the best way to do it? Maybe gold and silver isn't the best way to do it. Maybe just debt-free currency. But the name calling and the just you know trying to divide and conquer with the issue of race is ridiculous. Don't fall for it. <laughs>